A new municipal year begins in Jacksonville at the midpoint of 2020. The new leader in city council starting July 1st, the man who was mayor 30 years ago, Tommy Hazuri, and he's joining us in studio. We're also looking at the new human rights ordinance in Jacksonville and how this vote will be different than the protests we saw in 2017. Plus, Congressman, what have you heard from your constituents on this issue? Because I would imagine some of them have reached out to you very concerned about it. We ask U.S. Representative Buddy Carter to weigh in on the controversial killing of Ahmad Arbery in Glynn County. How he feels about his community's reaction on This Week in Jacksonville. You know, Jacksonville has earned criticism at times, but also some high praise during this pandemic. Friday, Mayor Lenny Curry took his message about navigating the coronavirus to lawmakers on Capitol Hill. Curry was among seven mayors across America city, who testified uh, in a congressional opening, uh, hearing held virtually. And, uh, Members of the Select yeah, Committee on the Coronavirus back Crisis back uh, wanted to hear about the federal government's response, but also how mayors like Curry worked with their states. Republican Jim Jordan of Ohio asked how Curry handled controversial issues. Mayor Curry, did you or your state's governor close churches? We did not close churches. Did you or your state's governor close gun stores, any gun shops? We did not. Did you or your state's governor encourage residents to snitch on their neighbors? Absolutely not. In fact, yesterday I have a press conference. I'm encouraging people to wear masks when they're in dense places, but that's a personal decision. While I strongly encourage it and I do it, I've told people, you don't need to be policing your neighbors. This isn't a police state. This is the land of the free and the home of the brave. We appreciate that. And, and Jacksonville and the state of Florida are largely opening up now. Is that right? I mean, you're, you're, you're close, as close to being back to normal as, as probably any other state in the country. We're very close with some capacity limitations, and we've got youth camps and sports uh, starting in the weeks ahead. Seven mayors testified, but Curry was called on most. And other cities represented included Seattle, L.A., and Atlanta. Now, across the way on the fourth floor of City Hall in Jacksonville are these city council offices. Tommy Hazuri was just elected this week to serve as president of city council starting July 1st. Now, he's a man who has served as mayor in Jacksonville. He served in the Florida House, and he served on the Duval County School Board. Earlier, I sat down with him to talk about that election and some of the other issues in front of the council. You're vice president already. Typically, that's who takes the next step to be president of the city council. So you were elected this week. Right. And everyone kind of knew that was happening, except at the last minute, all of a sudden, Danny Becton is up for it. How would you describe what happened there? How do you feel about it? Clearly, 16 council members, 15 others in you. Yeah, said, 16 yeah. pledged to me yeah. back in November, which... Normally, you don't get the pledges until January or February. Uh, but with all this going on right now with the JEA at the time, and that was hot and heavy, and then that's before the coronavirus. So uh, it was good that we did it then. And the 16 were there all the way through. Danny got in six days before. Um, honestly, I don't think he thought that he was going to win, even if he'd picked up a few votes. Uh, I think. You know, I hate to say this, but I think, quite frankly, he was trying to embarrass the Republican members of, of uh, our council. And their word is their bond. Their pledge meant a lot to me. I think it was about leadership. And um, I don't know what other reason he would have run f you know, for, uh, knowing that uh, six days before he had plenty of time to get the pledges. But I wasn't as concerned about that as, as uh, I don't want to divide the council. And I think it's important. I was really pleased and honored that Scott Wilson did his thing and supported me. And then, of course, the uh, other members of the Republican Party and the Democratic Party. Yeah, President Wilson came out the day before that vote and on a holiday held a news conference saying, hey, here's what's going on. And just what you said, I, I made a commitment and I want to stick by my word. Uh, that says a lot about him. Does that permeate through other members of the council as well? Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I think they supported me, not just because I was vice president, because unfortunately John Crescent lost when he was vice president by one vote. Uh, but you never know. There hadn't been, quite frankly, and, and I don't look at it as a Democrat-Republican position. We shouldn't. There are no potholes that are Democrat-Republican, no pandemic that's a Republican or Democrat, no JEA. But um, I look at it as... Uh, it's, it's something that really, it's about integrity, 
and not just with them keeping their pledges, but knowing that uh, my background and my leadership will carry forth and we won't miss a beat. Yeah. So uh, let's talk about leadership. What does the future hold when it comes to uh, JEA? I mean, what a, a difficult past year in terms of what's happened with the utility. There's been an uh, investigative committee. There have been some other things going on with city council. Will those continue, or do you see this as not being an issue anymore? Where do you stand on it? Oh, no. It's, it's an issue until it's not. Uh, I think what's happened with the new board members on the JEA are outstanding. Uh, them going forth now and, um, and looking for a permanent uh, director or CEO uh, is important. And Paul McElroy is outstanding to come back and do the job. Uh, they are on top of everything. They met with the employees, which I thought was very important to show uh, that the employees come first as well as the rate payers. And, um, but as far as the investigation, can't speak for the grand jury or the U.S. Attorney's Office, but they're doing their thing. We're doing our investigation, and it'll end when it ends. Uh, hopefully, I don't know that it'll end before my term starts, but it doesn't matter. Uh, it'll be finished between now and the next couple of months at least. Yeah. And then uh, also you've got um, the uh, committee that uh, Mike Borland is uh, chairing. It's looking to the future. To look at all the future and looking at the charter changes. I'm sure some will come out of the investigation committee too, uh, charter change recommendations. So we're spot on right now and uh, I feel good about where the JEA is. I feel good about where the city is. We'll finish up, dot our I's, cross our T's and, and move on. It seemed like three years ago all the uh, T's were crossed and I's dotted on a human rights ordinance. Now that's back in front of council. This is a lot different than three years ago when it was so divisive, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. When we had our public hearing on Tuesday evening at a council meeting, it lasted until 1130. Um, <clears throat> not as many, but for plenty for of people on both sides. So the same arguments that uh, we've heard in the parade of horribles that came in front of you about men and women using the same bathroom, the stores can't sell to so-and-so. Will, uh, will this pass? This it will change, pass. It's coming up uh, on Tuesday. And Monday and Tuesday and committee meetings and it'll pass out of there and then in two weeks after that or a week after that uh, on the 9th of uh, June uh, it will pass. Uh, it'll probably be pretty substantial. There'll be some who voted in the past against it will continue maybe a couple of new members but uh, it needs to be behind us. It's a shame the court did what they did. We did everything that was required. We just did it by statutes instead of the narrative. We do that all the time. When I was in the legislature, we did that to save paperwork, to save a lot of time. But they said, we want to see the whole uh, shebang. So they've got it. All we added was, uh, was uh, sexual preference and gender identity and to everything else that we do. It's about equality. It's about making a statement on who we are as a city. And I think that's very important. And I thank the council and the, and the mayor the mayor's already Sorry. said he'd sign this and, uh, bill. He let it become law within an hour after we passed it forward. on Valentine's Day this three years have, ago. So I'm very proud of him for that. You can I'm proud of both, both offices, the administration as well as our city council. And we have to work together. Uh, for one to be successful, the other has to be successful yeah. as well. Yeah. And you heard the councilman mentioning it right there. Uh, it's been a big topic in local politics that resurfaced this week, the human rights ordinance in Jacksonville. Ahead, we're going to hear from Gene Miller of the Civic Council. That's next on This Week in Jacksonville. Jacksonville, you voted. Now it's time to check out all the winners of Jack's Best. Head to newsforjacks.com slash Jack's Best to see who you picked as the best in every category. Presented by Visit Jacksonville. You may not see them, but your itchy eyes know they're out there. Thousands of allergens in each cubic yard of air. No wonder you rub your eyes hundreds of times a day. But now, relief is just one drop away. Introducing Pataday. Full prescription strength Pataday works right in your eyes, right in the cells that make them itch fast. Just one drop once a day means relief that lasts all day. So turn your day into a Pataday. Now get Pataday without a prescription everywhere. Some people say there are many Floridas, but in this moment, we are one. We might not share the same concerns, responsibility, joy, or fear, but we all share the same hope to stay healthy and get through this together. For 75 years, 
Florida Blues remained committed to the one place we call home. A bull in a china shop, changing Washington. It takes a Donald Trump to demand truth from China. Shut down foreign travel. Get ventilators and tests now. Raise unemployment benefits. Cash relief to families. Washington's come to that. President Trump's not always polite. Mr. Nice Guy won't cut it. He does it his way, not the Washington way. But Donald Trump gets it done. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. Your answers are safe. By law, every census form is confidential and cannot be shared with anyone in law enforcement. You're here. You count. Fill out the 2020 census. Be counted. Right now is different for everyone. We've all had to adjust, but our spirit will not be broken. Even when we struggle, we find ways to take care of others. Our kids' lives have turned upside down, but that hasn't stopped us from celebrating their achievements. That's what we do. We never give up. That's Jacksonville pride. And News 4 Jax is right there, moving forward together every step of the way with people you know and trust. Channel 4 is the local station. All school districts in Florida will close. In this unprecedented moment, local students have been through one of the most challenging years of their lives. Join the local station celebrating the class of 2020 with the first ever local virtual graduations and senior showcases. Saturday, help us celebrate these schools. Brightest and best on Channel 4, the local station. Brought to you by Community First Credit Union. You're watching This Week in Jacksonville with Kent Justice. The Jacksonville Civic Council is made up of 80-some business leaders from the area, mostly CEOs of the companies that you've heard of. I spoke with CEO Jean Miller this week about her letter to the mayor and city council about passing an update to the HRO. Earlier this week, as you know, the Civic Council sent out uh, a letter to city council and to the mayor, Curry, urging them to support and pass the just the technical revision and update of this um, of the human rights ordinance. As you'll recall, in 2017, uh, the human rights ordinance was passed that ensures full and fair access to all of our citizens, including those in the LGBT community. Uh, that includes public accommodation, is just treating everyone equally uh, on the same basis. And um, and since that time, uh, you know, a, a group of citizens appealed that, and it was reversed and put, sent down to the trial court on a technicality and really sent back to city council to fix that. So city council did the right thing. They introduced legislation, corrective legislation to fix it. And we're urging um, them to pass that. They're going through the absolute appropriate process, the standard process for all legislation. So um, we uh, just wanted to make sure that we were the voices were heard and and as um, you know 80 plus CEOs of the largest companies in the region representing you know hundreds of thousands of um, employees in the region uh, we want city council to know and our elected leaders to know that this is very important to the vibrancy and the future of our city how is this different than what happened three years ago and I certainly heard that in terms of people who are making public comments during the city council meeting this week sure you know, this is different because back in 2017, and if we go back to even to 2012, uh, 2016, there was an attempt in 2017, we had to persuade folks that this was not going to damage businesses, that this was not going to threaten um, life, safety, welfare, that this was not, there were a number of things that, that were said that could have happened, um, and they haven't happened. And if you ask the sheriff, if you ask anybody else, you know, a few things, there have been a few complaints to the Human Rights Commission, but I think at that point, you had to persuade people that this was the right thing to do, whereas we're in a time now, three years later, when I think most people understand that this is the right thing to do. And, and so this is more a matter of fixing a technical problem. The policy of the city has been clear and has been accepting this, and, and, and this has been the policy of the city. So almost to reverse that at this point would be going back and by telling the people who've moved here in the last three years that somehow they don't matter or they're, they, they're not going to be treated fairly. How do you think it has affected uh, business, 
citizenry. Uh, I mean, just the whole living experience here in Northeast Florida in the past three years where this policy has been in place. You know, I think one of the callers uh, to the public hearing last night um, said it best, and he said he uh, moved here. They picked a, a place. Um, he and his spouse picked a place that um, they wanted to live. And this was in the last three years they picked to Jacksonville um, and, you know, to, to kind of retire. But you have businesses who have moved here, um, some of which I'm very much aware of who have um, who have strong policies in favor of, you know, spousal benefits um, for LGBT partners um, or, or spouses. And to go back on that now would send a very, would not send a positive signal to those companies or frankly to, um, to other cities around the state and the nation. I mean, at one time, being a, a member of Leadership Florida, um, at one time, um, the former mayor of Tampa used to, used to advertise and he said that Jacksonville was the only city that didn't have an HRO ordinance. So please, businesses, when you're coming to Jacksonville, please, or when you're coming to Tampa or thinking about it, please move to Tampa instead of Jacksonville because they don't, your, your employees are not going to have the same protections. I also spoke with Miller about Councilman Hazuri's election as president. And then we shifted to the topic of JEA, an issue that the Civic Council leaned into heavily late last year. It's in the hands of the federal investigators uh, and the city council members who can continue to investigate. But we will continue, and we have continued our research and looking at Jacksonville's financial structure and our financial health. Uh, and that will continue um, on as we go forward. We also work uh, closely with the new board. The new board for JEA has come very, very highly regarded and respected. Several of them are civic council members, in fact, uh, and uh, some of them even worked on this. So they have a lot of um, a lot of information on it, a lot of background, and they're just very highly regarded individuals. So we're hopeful um, under Paul McElroy's leadership and uh, with the new board that JEA will both stabilize and and really look at the future um, of public power and those opportunities, because we think there are several opportunities there that maybe um, we've not taken advantage of. All right, Congressman Buddy Carter from Georgia is going to join us next. We're asking about Ahmad Arbery and the case in his district that has caught national attention. So stay with us on This Week in Jacksonville. Looking for fresh, informative health news? Go to BaptistJax.com and click on the Juice section. Test your health knowledge with our monthly quiz from Baptist Health. Go to the contest page on news4jacks.com and you could win a $25 gift card. Even in a time filled with unknowns, one thing is for certain. This is not the first storm we've weathered together. And while this storm may look different, JEA's commitment remains the same. To continue taking care of those local businesses who continually take care of us. With a promise of reliable energy, safe water, and financial relief for those who need it. Because unless we have the backs of those on the front line, We'll never get back to business as usual. We're here to keep you connected, Jacksonville. Visit JEA.com. I've been thinking a lot about space lately. Specifically, this space out back. And how I can turn it from this into this. Public storage is clean, close, and ready now with limited contact precautions. First month's rent is just $1. Save up to 30% after that. To find a unit near you, text FILL to 250250. Goodwill of North Florida is slowly and safely reopening stores and donation centers following CDC guidelines. Please check our website at goodwilljacks.org for locations and hours of operation. Help us bring good home. When there's hope, when you soar, when you help, there's only one news team you can count on to cover the stories that lift you up. Anchors and reporters who put you first, making it worth your time to watch every day. When you want a news team who understands why local is what matters most, watch News 4 Jacks every night starting at 5, the local station. 
Facts have never been more important than now. They can be the difference between life and death. Rely on the Trust Index, your first line of defense against disinformation. Just look for the seal. It's true means it passed the test and we can back it up. Not true means it's fake. Don't trust it. And be careful means not entirely right or wrong, but it could be risky. In the battle against disinformation, no fact is off the table. If it seems suspicious, send it to us and we'll get answers. The Trust Index, only on News 4 Jax. Serving with the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office for over 24 years and living in this community all my life, I've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly. I've been the victim of a crime. I know how victims feel. My number one goal as News for Jax crime and safety expert is keep you informed, keep you aware, and most of all, keep you safe. I want to be able to provide that kind of perspective so that people will know everything is under control. Watch News 4 Jax every night starting at 5, the local station. You're watching This Week in Jacksonville on Channel 4. Buddy Carter is in his third term as U.S. Representative in Georgia's 1st District. Now, that district has been under national scrutiny the past month with video released of the killing of Ahmaud Arbery. Now three people are under arrest, and investigators want to know why it took as long as it did. That's something I asked the congressman about. Well, I'm, I'm much more comfortable now than I was, um, say, a month ago at, at, the, at what is happening. This is something that that obviously we're very concerned about. Um, something that we've had the governor who has come in and, 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 and instructed the GBI to, to do an investigation. The day after the GBI got down there, they, they made a rest. And now we're in the process of making sure that we are making sure that justice is done and, and that justice is followed, whatever that may be. That is the most important thing. And, and also reviewing what was done before then. And was, you know, was there any, anything improper done and, and what needs to, how does that need to be addressed? Because this is something that we take very seriously. There's outrage in the community as to what has happened here. Obviously, a young man has lost his life. And that is something that this community is not going to stand for, that this nation is not going to stand for. Having said that, I have to tell you that I'm very proud of the way that our community and our district has reacted. Uh, if, if you compare it, if you will, to other events that have happened, just like in Minneapolis, what we've seen happen there, you've seen riots, you've seen um, lootings and, and other things, that, that has not thankfully happened in our district. I think that the, the, the leaders have come together, community leaders have come together, both African-American and white, and, 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 and have really pulled the community together to say, we want justice done here. We want to see what we want to see happen, what should happen. And instead of, of, of the protest, now there have been protests, yes, but they've been, they've been peaceful. They have been peaceful protest, and that's something that I, I think speaks well and highly of our community. Yeah, uh, you mentioned Minneapolis. There are other places where uh, things get out of control. Why is it different in your district? I mean, clearly you said you're proud of how people have responded there. Well, I think it's different because our community leaders have pulled together. And, uh, you know, the, the African-American pastors and, and we have um, some county commissioners who have, have really taken the lead to say that what we want here is to see justice. And we want this, we want the process to work. We want the judicial process to work here. And, and all this other stuff is, is not going to help. And, and as long as we can make sure that justice is followed, that's what we should be concentrating on. And I, I have to compliment them and applaud them for the outstanding work that they've done. Uh, you know, we've had a core group come together in Brunswick of African-American pastors, of, of, um, uh, of white leaders as well. And, and they've been determined to keep this under control and not let it get out of control. And they've done an outstanding job of that. Congressman, what have you heard from your constituents on this issue? Because I would imagine some of them have reached out to you very concerned about it. They have. Um, you know, surprisingly, not really surprisingly, but we've been getting a lot of calls from outside of the district. And, and, and we understand it, it, this is a, a national issue and, and it's got national attention. We understand that. But from, you know, from our constituents within the first district, specifically within Glenn County, you know, they just, they want to see justice and they want to see that the judicial, judicial system works. 
and and they want to have faith in in their in, in their public safety and in, in, in their police departments and they they want that faith to be restored and and that's very important yeah. Let's shift uh, the conversation a little bit here. You've got a, a background in medicine, and here we are uh, into our third month of a pandemic and the response. Georgia and Florida both have been kind of out in front saying, hey, here's how we're going to reopen safely. How do you feel about the steps that are being taken now? Are we doing the right thing? I think we are. And I think it's going to take a combination of of two things in order for this to be a safe and effective rollout of our economy. One has to be technology, and that is robust testing. We've got to have robust testing. That's going to be very important to make sure that we are focusing our efforts where we need to be focusing. The other has to be personal responsibility. Look, we're opening up our economy, but that doesn't mean that we just go back to the way we were before. We still have to practice those those things that the the task force have been telling us. We still need to wash our hands. We still need to make sure we're practicing social distancing where possible. We still need to make sure that we're wearing masks if you're showing symptoms. All of those things are incumbent upon us and the personal responsibility. And listen, if you're not going to do it for yourself, you need to do it for others. Be considerate of others as well. I saw Dr. Fauci yesterday saying there are some high hopes that by December, maybe we would have a vaccine. How do you feel about that process? Do you think a vaccine is coming sooner than than we expected? I do. And, And if you look at it in terms of Uh, of how long it takes for a vaccination to be developed, this is pretty phenomenal because usually you're talking three to five years for a vaccine to come to market. And and yet we're talking in perhaps less than a year that it will be not only on the market, but also in mass production. That is simply phenomenal. And it shows you the, the effort that has been put forth by Congress. Remember that early on, the first package that we passed for the coronavirus relief package had to do with making sure we were having research and development being done for a vaccination. The National Institutes of Health, the CDC, and plus the private public partnership that we see. That has been something I've been very proud of in this country. I continue to say that the greatest scientists, the greatest innovators are right here in the United States of America. And and now we're seeing that. I do think it's very promising that we will have vaccination by late fall or early winter and that we could see it in mass production and, and have it out on the market. We're working to get Senator Kelly Leffler from Georgia with us next week. Plus, the City Council Committee investigating JEA. Where does it go from here? Chairman Rory Diamond is back with us. This Week in Jacksonville airs each Sunday morning at this time. I'm Kent Justice. Thanks for watching on air on Channel 4 and the CW17 and online at news4jax.com. See why every day more people are choosing News 4 Jax, Northeast Florida and South Georgia's number one source for local news.